Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to go off with a couple of the properties of the logarithm. So, what I want to do is you guys, you know, remember wrote those down. Uh, we had those different properties that you guys wrote down. Uh, so, let's just kind of go back through those again. And I'm going to do them with, uh, actually, we have natural logarithms. So, let's do it with natural logarithms. If I had ln of uh, ln of xy, that's the same thing as ln of x plus the ln of y. All right? So if you have an expression where you're multiplying inside your logarithmic equation, it doesn't matter if it's ln or if it's log. Just remember ln has a base e. If you have ln of x times y, we can rewrite that as the expression of ln of x plus ln of y. And if we have ln of x divided by y, we can write that as ln of x minus ln of y. And if we have ln of x raised to the m, that is the same thing as m times ln of x. All right. Remember we talked about these with the properties of exponents? You guys remember we kind of went over those? Properties of exponents and ln, how they regard. But we did logs. But remember, ln is a logarithm. It's what we call a natural logarithm, where the base is e. But we just don't need to write it in there, because we know the base is e. All right. So when, it, when you want to expand an expression, all we're simply going to do is, when we look at this, all right, what we see is we have a division problem, right? So therefore, I'm going to want to expand that. When I have a division problem, I can rewrite this as a subtraction. So I'm going to break it up now into two different logarithms, into ln of the square root of x cubed times z minus the ln of 4. Everybody understand where I came from at that point? Okay. Now, we notice that there's actually a product here as well. right? This is the ln of that product, the square root of x cubed plus z. So now I rewrite that. Since that's a product, I can rewrite it as an addition. So that's ln of the square root of x cubed plus ln of z minus ln of 4. Whew. All right. And then the next thing as we look at this, well, what does the square root mean? And does anybody remember what a number raised to the square root, what rational exponent that is? I heard it. One half. If you guys forgot this, please write this down. x to the a over b is equal to the b root of x to the a power. So if you forgot that from algebra 2, please write that down, because we will be using those um, in this section. Okay. Nicholas, you remember that? Yeah. Good. So <laughs> um, anyways, so let's just look at x squared. That's really the same thing as 2 over 1, right? So that's equal to the second root of x to the first power, which we just say is the square root of x. OK? Ah, la, la. Sorry. Of course, x squared, um, yeah, 2 over 1. No, no, no. Yeah, it's supposed to be, I'm sorry, x to the 1 half. Sorry. There we go. Not x squared. x to the 1 half, you take your b over there. It's not x squared. b, right? b goes in front. There you go. So therefore, this is really, um, so this is really x cubed raised to the 1 half power. Does anybody remember what we do when we have a power raised to another power? Add, subtract, multiply. Good. So this is really x to the 3 halves. So I'm just going to rewrite this because I don't want to rewrite the whole expression. And then when we have an exponent, what can we do with the exponent? Bring it in front as a product. So our final answer is 3 halves ln of x plus ln of z minus ln of 4. Fine. Because that's the product. That's the rule. If you have ln of x raised to a power, you can bring the m in front as a product. Cool? Amazing. Exciting? Intriguing. Cowell.